I'm Natalie McClutchy and you're watching McClutchy Maths. Today in our video we're going to look at planar graphs and Euler's formula. I'm going to take you through a couple of worked examples. This is for Year 12 General Maths Unit 4. So let's get started with a brief recap on some vocabulary from our last video which was the introduction to networks for Year 12. So we looked at some new vocabulary in that video on edges and vertices. So you recall that edges are our straight lines that join two points on a network and those points on the network are called vertices. And we're going to be using this language in today's video, edges and vertices. Now if you haven't watched the previous video, it would be a good idea to go back and have a look or right, uh, take a recap. Okay, so in our focus today, we're going to be talking about something called a planar graph. Now, I'll take you into that in a moment, what that is. But our context for this is that sometimes we have networks where it's not ideal to have intersection of edges. And you can see in the diagram below, we've got an intersection between AC and BD. Now, if you think about some real life context, perhaps in a railway network, Whenever we have an intersection, it creates a lot of cost on our network. That could be from a level crossing or having to build a bridge over the railway tracks or even having to go underground with some sort of a subway system. So that adds a lot of cost to our network and sometimes it's just better to go around. Sometimes it's not always possible in real life context, but in a network we like to redraw those networks without the intersections. Now a planar graph is a special type of graph that can be redrawn to eliminate all those intersections. So we've got one on the left here and that could be redrawn with that arc going around the bottom so that there's no longer that intersection of AC and BD. So it's a very important distinction that both of these are planar graphs. They can be redrawn without the intersections. Now there's some very important things that can only happen with planar graphs. So it's important that firstly if you do get asked to do certain things with Euler's formula, for example, which we'll touch on in a moment, that you're able to turn it into a graph without intersections first. So there will be some graphs you may come across where it's impossible to get rid of the intersections and these ones are not planar graphs. So sometimes it's a good plan if we need to redraw that network without the connections to have a bit of a system. And I'm going to take you through the little system that I use today. And because we've got some very complicated networks, it's a good idea that you follow the process. Now, I've noticed after I taught some of my students the process this week, some of them were then going on and just ignoring a lot of the steps and they were getting themselves into difficulty. So it's a good idea when you're starting out and you're a beginner that you do follow the process as carefully as possible. And some good equipment to get hold of for yourself might be an erasable pen, a lead pencil and an eraser, or even an erasable highlighter. These are going to be some great equipment pieces for you as you're doing this unit. So firstly, we're asked with worked example one to redraw the graph shown so that there's no intersecting edges. So just looking at that, my big problem is EC. If I didn't have EC where it is, then it, it's one that's actually intersecting across AF and also BD. And that's what's causing the problems in this network. Now, I can see just with my eye here, and I know because I've done this example already, that this is a planar graph. It, can, it is possible to redraw that without those intersections. So we're going to do that now. So step one is a good idea. Now this is a fairly simple one. There's actually ones with a lot more. I've seen ones with upwards of 14 or 15 edges. So it's a good idea firstly before you start is to keep a list of every one of those connections that you need. So I'm going to write a list and I'm going to actually draw over the top of my network with a different colour just to make sure that I've included everything. Because if I'm just trying to count off by touching on them with a pencil, for example, if you're using a screen, it makes it kind of hard to make sure you haven't forgot anything. So we're going to pick a point. It doesn't need to be any specific point, just a random point, and move along that network in a different colour. So I've got my starting point is A to B, and I've drawn over that in green, and then I've written the connection AB somewhere else. And then I'm going to do that with B, E, write that down, E, C, and slowly work my way right around the network to make sure I've got every edge listed. Now comes the fun part, we get to redraw the network. So I've got my original network there on the left so I can remember what I'm doing. And my next step is that in a new space, I'm going to just start by drawing in edges and vertices that have no intersection to begin with. So I could start with EB, that's one of those safe edges, it didn't cross anywhere in the start. And I'm going to add, cross that off as I go from my list of edges and then add little bits at a time. So now I've got A to B, that one there didn't have an intersection in the early starts of my network, so I can add that one in, cross it off as I go. I'm gonna add FD now, it wasn't a problematic edge. DC, 
and cross that off the list. Okay, so now I'm left with all of the different edges that in the beginning had intersections. So this is where I need to be making some careful decisions to make sure that I can remove those. So firstly, I'm gonna add them in one at a time, making sure that that intersection doesn't take place. So I'm gonna reconnect up A and F again, cross that off the list down the bottom, and then I'm gonna add in the next one, cross off that one at the bottom, and that leaves me with two. Here we go, BD's gone. And lastly, I've got to think about what am I going to do with EC? I can't go through the middle. And this is a really important thing to note too. When you're redrawing these networks, you can't just redraw the vertices in different places. These vertices could, for example, represent towns or geographical places, and you just can't move that to another place. But you can remove the connections between them. So we're moving edges around, not vertices around. So step four, I've got that one connection to go, EC, and I'm going to draw an arc around the top of the graph. Now, it's a bit of a wobbly one that I've done there, and I've crossed that off, and I'm just double-checking now to make sure I haven't missed any edges. And because I've got that list to start with, I am on the right path. Now, I didn't have to go around the top. I could have also chosen to go around the bottom, and there's no right or wrong way to do that as long as I don't have any more intersections when I'm done. So there you go, that's how we redraw a graph so that there are no, no connections or intersections. Okay, in a planar graph, we have different areas called faces. So in this particular um, graph, I don't need to redraw that one, there are no intersections. But in these connected graphs, we've all got these spaces called faces. And a face is basically all of the shapes that are made within a different network. So in this particular network, I've got triangles three different triangles, and that space around the outside is also a face. It's my fourth face. So in this particular network, I've got four. Now, Euler was a very eminent mathematician and scientist from the 1700s from Switzerland. And he developed a formula that talks about the relationship between edges, vertices, and faces. And this is going to be your only network formula on the QCAA formula sheet. So this is the one that you do not have to remember. It's Euler's formula. Now, some people do get caught up in calling it Euler's formula, Euler's formula. The pronunciation is not really that important, so your teacher may pronounce it slightly differently to how I do. I get called McClutchy, McCluskey, McClucky, McCluffy. It's not a big deal. So I know what I'm being called, and Euler's no longer alive, so it's really not that important. So this is a formula that is important for us, though, as we go on to work on networks. Now, with Euler's formula, we're going to try it with this particular simple connector graph. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is state my variables. I've got five vertices, count them yourself, A, B, C, D, E. I've got seven edges, and you may want to pause the video just so you can count those and verify them. And I have four, face, four faces. Remember that outside area space is a face as well. If I substitute that into the formula now, I've got five plus four, take away seven is two. And if I simplify that further, I've got nine take away seven is two. Well, that's true. So yes, we have proved that Euler's formula works in a simple connector graph. Now, it's something really important to note that we can only use these on connected planar graphs once we've removed the intersections. So if you get a graph and there's intersections taking place, those intersections create extra faces, obviously. We need to remove those intersections first before we can apply the formula. And that's something that's really important to note. And I'll show you why. Here's our example that we did earlier where we took graph one and turned it into graph two. Now, if you look on the right hand side, what I've done is counted the edges, vertices and faces for the first graph, which was a planar graph because the intersections can be removed. However, it doesn't work with Euler's formula. However, once I've removed those intersections, I can now apply Euler's formula and it works for graph two. So that's a very important distinction to make that if you're going to use Euler's formula, you have to remove your intersections. Now, my third and final worked example today is looking at uh, applications of Euler's formula. For example, I could be asked how many faces would a connected planar graph have if there were seven uh, vertices and 10 edges? Well, my steps are gonna be the same with anything that I do where I write a formula. I'm going to write the formula first, and then I'm going to state my variables and substitute into the formula. I was a little bit naughty on this PowerPoint, and I didn't state the variables on there, but it's always a good idea to do that. And then step three, I'm going to solve to find F, and I'm going to find that F is five different faces on this particular diagram. And then my last step is going to be to write a statement that there are five faces. Well, that's all we have time for today, and thank you.
grateful that you've joined me. I hope you like and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more videos on networks and matrices. Have a great day.